In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the results of C gap elements. So here you can see some of the forces acting in the C gap elements. And the tools we're going to be using today are the post processor web app. The post processor web app is free to any MSC NAS trend user. Also, the post processor web app is only compatible with MSC Nastran. If you're using a different version of Nastran, this tool is not compatible with that. It's only compatible with MSC Nastran. Now, if you want to start using the post processor web app today, you can visit theengineeringlab.com. In the top right hand corner, there's a blue button that says free download post processor web app. Click that button, click that link, sign up or fill out the form and we'll get you started with access to the post processor web app. You'll either get an online version of the web app or you'll get your own installer for the post processor web app. Now, to start off this tutorial, let's go ahead and navigate to the home page of the Soul 200 web app. Let's click on tutorials and let's look for the tutorial that has C gap in the title. So here we scroll down a little. We have this tutorial called C gap element force and stresses and C gap elements. Let's go ahead and click that link. And let's go ahead and right click and extract the contents of this bulk data file. Now this bulk data file has already been created by a different tool. Uh, we already have the beam elements. We have the nodes, the loading and the supports. We also have the H5 file that contains the results of this NAS trend analysis. So you can think that the H5 file has the displacements, the beam forces, and the C gap forces. So now once we have these files, let's go ahead and open the viewer. And we're going to go ahead and upload that bulk data file. And we're also going to upload the H5 file. And I should mention that this example, let's go ahead and go into front view. This example is from the Patron Post Processing Manual. If you refer to problem 13, titled Nonlinear Statics Beam with Gap Elements, you'll find more information of how this model is supported, how it's loaded, and some more information about maybe the materials. So the first thing we want to do is verify that we get the same displacements as stated in the post processing manual. Here, if we look at point B and point D. So point B, you can imagine is here. And then point D would be here on the far right hand corner. Uh, I think if I show you this other diagram, you can see B is in this part of the model. So it's uh, between points A and C and then point D is in the far right hand corner. So let's go ahead and create a deformation plot for that. So we've already selected this data set. We've already selected this subcase here. Let's go ahead and turn on the marker plot and let's only look at maybe the Y components of deflection. Here, let's go ahead and scale up the scale factor. So here, this is what the deflection looks like. Let's go ahead and turn on some maximum labels here. So this is uh, the maximum deformation here is about uh, 0.544. So if you look here in the document at point D, the deflection is a positive 0.546. And here, this value is in line with what we were expecting. Let's go ahead and turn on a minimum label. So here we get the minimum is at point B here. So it's uh, this, this section here. We're getting a value of about negative one. And if we look back at the post-processing menu, we are aligned with the value of negative one. So that's a quick look at the deflections. What about the forces and the C gap elements? Let's go ahead and switch to gap and select the first subcase. Let's go ahead and turn on some of the selected fields and turn on the arrow plot. Let's just go ahead and make sure I've done this correctly. Oh, right. So one thing you have to keep in mind, uh, in the model display panel, make sure you've turned on the P gap property. So right now I'm displaying the beam cross section. Let's turn off the beam cross section. And here in green are the lines for the beam elements. 
Let's go ahead and turn off the P beam property. So here I have two markers that represent the C gap elements. And now let me turn on everything else. And let me go back to the post processor web app. And when I display the C gap elements, now I can see the forces that are acting in the C gap elements. So now let me turn on the other components for the force. Let's go ahead and turn on these three. And let me turn off the deformation. Let me go into front view and here, let's zoom in a little. Let's maybe turn on the maximum and the minimum label. So here you see C gap elements 11 and 12. Here I'm told that the highest force is happening here. It's an element 11 field FX or force in the X direction for that C gap element. It's about 3000. What about the other C gap element? What's the force there? So here the forces in the Y and the Z axis, they're both zero. We're only loading this in the Y direction. So here for this C gap element, the uh, force in the X direction is very small. It's a negative 0.0001579. So this is a very small force in C gap element. And that's a quick overview of element forces for C gaps. Uh, a few other comments. If you want to go into first person mode, you do that by clicking this button on the far left hand side, then click controls. When you do that, you can then inspect the model like you would in a video game. You can move sideways with the keyboard. You can move sideways with the keyboard again. You can move in. You can move out. You can use the mouse to look around. So this is very intuitive for anyone who's played a video game before. So here we're rotating the model. And then let's go ahead and zoom out and step away from the model. So that's first person view. Now let's exit here. Um, what if you wanna output all this data to Excel? How do you do that? You also get a free version of the HDF5 Explorer. So let's go ahead and open the H5 file. And then this lets me access the data that's contained in the H5 file. Remember, results are contained in the H5 file. Here, let's go ahead and find the data set for gap and click all here. So here we'll click acquire data set this has extracted all the element forces for the C gap elements. If I click on download CSV, I can now use this elsewhere. Maybe you want to do additional hand calculations. Uh, you can take advantage of the HDF5 Explorer to do that. The HDF5 Explorer also can create plots or graphs or XY plots. So that's another reason why you would want to use the HDF5 Explorer. I think if you look at the icon for the HDF5 Explorer, you can see that it's represented as a graph. It implies that you use this tool to not only acquire data to tables, but also create graphs. So to recap, this is how you look at element forces for C gap elements, how you create some deformation plots. The Soul 200 web app, specifically the post processor web app, is free to MSC Natron users. So if you go to theengineeringlab.com and click on the blue link here on the top right, you'll get access to the post processor web app and the HDF5 Explorer. With that, I'll stop here. And as always, thank you so much for watching.